What is going on everybody? So, today, what do we got? Because that's what you came here for, you didn't come to look at me, right? Unless you did. Alright, so, today we have the Blitz Enterprise and the Vaping Postman collaboration. This is the FP RTA, 30mm dual coil RTA, honeycomb air flows. So, Without further ado, let's drop it down low, show you the ins and outs, and then we'll come back up top and I'll give you my opinion on it. You're not gonna wanna miss my opinion on it, I promise you that. So let's go down low and I'll show you the tank. All right, so we are down low with the Blitz Enterprises FPRTA by the Vaping Postman. This is gonna be the front of your package. Nothing on that side, on this side, social media for blitz another symbol for blitz and then this one is going to be your scratch for authenticity and colors i have it in the stainless steel and then this is just some information for blitz keep the contents of this package out of the reach of children non-smokers and animals yeah pretty simple box so inside the package you are going to get two extra of your ceramic clamps a bunch of o-rings and some extra screws for your clamps you will get a fp user manual <clears throat> something that i like two extra straight glasses and you will also get a clear drip tip. The one that comes on the tank itself is this neural drip tip. So here's the outside of the tank. It's going to say FP there. F on this top ring. P on the airflow control. Coming to the bottom of the tank. It's going to say FP RTA. This is number 1092. Designed by TVP and Blitz. See, you got your airflow control here on the bottom. So there's the smallest one. Then it'll step up to that guy. And then the last step up is there. Obviously, what you do there will be done on the other. The P's and this little thing is, I guess, like what you would help for knurling. And then, so here on the top, you got an 810 drip tip rubber o-ring on the inside there no o-ring on your 810 drip tip taking the fill port off threads are nice here and this is going to be a nice thick chunky piece of metal here this is water on there from cleaning it you're going to have an o-ring right here nice chunky pretty good machining so there's your two huge kidney fill ports. Taking the chimney and glass off. So obviously this is the bubble glass I have on there. Bubble glass is going to take it to 6 mils of juice. Straight glass will be 4.5. Popping the bubble glass off. You will have one o-ring here for the top side of your glass here's that knurled chimney that has fp into it coming to the inside of the chimney pretty decent machining decent conical design here not too long of a chimney piece for a 30 millimeter tank pretty short distance i do like the look of this knurling um, from my understanding, TVP was not the one who said the knurling helps wicking, but that was something that FP said. Um, so yeah, or sorry, something that Blitz said. So coming to the deck, you will have two ceramic posts, two ceramic posts, and these screws are absolute shit. You can't get a flathead in there securely or a Phillips. Um, so you got to get something that's going to kind of bite. What I like to use is like a flathead. And what I will do 
is I will put it in this part right here and get it right in there and just push down as hard as I can because it is uh, they're not the best Phillips heads you're gonna have 31 millimeter airflow holes here nice honeycomb airflow wicking ports here are very sufficient they give you plenty of room to get wick in there GTA style floating deck so what I suggest with the wicking is you cut them around right about here and keep them like I would tuck it halfway down in this chamber here definitely don't want them hanging below I like to just dam up the top half of it with the cotton and the juice just flows no problem this is definitely a high powered tank it wants power and it keeps up in the wicking department no problem so on threading this clamps they are not on a spring so you will have to pull them out there and like I showed <clears throat> there is two extra of these ceramic clamps in case you need them so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drop my build in this and I will show you where I position it alright so we got some Mitch Green coils in there glowing nice and evenly so one thing about this you just got to be careful make sure you have a nice gap in between your coils and that they are not touching that's right about where I like to run them a nice distance there I like to keep them level with those clamps and then I'll bring them out so that that last hole is just grazing the outside of the coil and what's gonna happen is that center airflow string there is going to be like forced up into the center of those coils there and then these other two are going to slam right into the bottom of it so it has very effective and true bottom airflow so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to wick it and i will show you that right now all right so I have this one side right here, which is exactly where I want it. I got it nice and fluffed out, and I got it trimmed at the length you're going to want it. So <clears throat> you can see, well, if I could focus, that's the length, and when I lay it down, it's coming right so that it just like barely fall short of those top threads and then when I tuck it in it just nicely dams the top of that well there you don't want it too tight and you don't want it too long if you do it just like this right here I promise you this tank is gonna wick amazingly cuz I'm running it hot So you're going to want it just like that. Nothing peeking through the bottom. And you will have an amazing wicking time with this tank. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. So I will meet you back up top. So a couple things I wanted to show real quick. Got my build all wicked up. Sitting in there. Firing. So, when it comes to this bubble glass, there is a square side and a rounded side. Now it's, I don't know if it's going to pick up on camera, but this side is the rounded side here at the top, and then this side is the rounded side. So, according to a few people from the UK, um, <clears throat> they told me that the rounded side, which is here, and if you can't see it, when if you own this tank, if you feel it, you'll feel a squared off side and you'll feel a rounded side. Apparently the square side is supposed to go to the top 
and that is because if if it's the other way around I guess the way it is that it can get or will get vapors locked so that is something that needs to be said that I almost forgot to add in there and one other thing the the threading to screw this chimney on is not the smoothest once it catches it's smooth but it's hard to catch it's a little a little rough so yeah there is the fp we'll go back up top and i will give you my final opinions on the bitch all right so we got the fp sitting on top of the Stormbreaker triple 21700 parallel mechanical mod got a Mitch Green <clears throat> Nichrome 80 alien build in this guy I've been running these 30 T's for this is the second day now and they're still hitting pretty friggin hard I think they're down to about 3.8 volts so get almost getting they are under the halfway mark in, in my book because I charge them around 3.5 volts. Anyways, review for the Stormbreaker coming soon. I don't know why I'm even talking about that right now. Back to the FP RTA. 30 millimeter dual coil honeycomb airflow tank. Collaboration of TVP, the Vaping Postman, and Blitz Enterprises. Now this isn't the newest tank, but I thought it was definitely worth reviewing. Shout out to Jay Money because he would not stop talking about this tank and uh, he basically made me get one. So, let's talk about the tank. Start with cons. Cons. <clears throat> I'm gonna start with uh, aesthetically. Cons for me, and this is obviously subjective, everything I'm about to say is subjective because your opinion may be different, but the F along the top piece and the P along the bottom in my opinion I think it would have looked good with just those little notches no P and no F up there but it is pretty subtle you don't really notice it unless you actually take a look directly at the tank but I mean it's all about the little things I guess some people might like it I personally don't moving forward from that the threading on the chimney to the deck is a little crunchy at first and then it starts to go on but other than that uh, threading on the top fill is good uh, o-rings are all good tolerances the a AFC spins no problem whatsoever um, the bubble tank I feel like it should have been made the same on both sides so that people didn't have to pay attention to where what way should be up or down uh, personally, I've never experienced vapor lock with it, but that's what I was told to do. So I'm not going to try to test it the other way. That's just what I was told. The other way I was told it will vapor lock. I am not going to purposely put it upside down and try to dry hit this thing. So if you want to try it out, be my guest. <clears throat> um, now. I'm going to give it cons for this just because it's a 30 millimeter tank. For me personally, I love it about it, but I'm only going to give it cons because it's a 30 millimeter for these two reasons. One, um, the coils you can put in this as far as dual coil goes, I would say three millimeters, probably the biggest you want to go because you saw how close they were together. If you start going bigger than that, you're gonna probably be hitting coils. Definitely not a dual four millimeter. I'm not even gonna try a three and a half, but maybe if you finagle it, probably not a four uh, in dual mode. <clears throat> it probably would not fit it without them touching together or being so close together, it's just unsafe. Um, so even though I don't care about that, um, I have to give it a con because it's a 30 millimeter tank. Also, this, I like this, but I'm only giving this a con because it's a 30 millimeter, as I just said seven times. The airflow is restrictive, so even wide open to that biggest slot, it's not a huge difference from that tiny one there. Honestly, you would expect it to be like this in huge, huge difference, 
wide open, wide open, it's still a re, uh, restrictive lung hit. Now, I'm only giving that a con because it's a 30 millimeter tank and you would expect it to have a little more airflow. But that's pretty much all I have for negatives. All around the board, the airflow is smooth as fuck. That honeycomb airflow plate on the bottom that sits underneath the coils is just clutch. It's so smooth. And the way that it encases the coils, it slams right around them from underneath, <clears throat> giving this tank spectacular flavor. I would never expect the flavor quality I'm getting off a 30 millimeter RTA like I'm getting off of this. So pros are going to be um, flavor is top notch, airflow smooth, so smooth. Um, building it is pretty easy. The first coil slides right in there, no problem, tighten it down. The only issue I see maybe somebody having is uh, getting that second coil in there. You have to finagle it a little bit to get it around the other coil. But my recommendation would be slide the first coil in all the way. Um, I pretty much tighten them down with them almost touching the, the clamps. And then after I tighten them up, then I'll pull them out to the spot that I want them to be. Uh, when you get it right against the clamp, it makes it a little bit easier to slide the other coil in. Um, but other than that, build quality is easy. The wicking ports are perfect size. They're, they have plenty of space, but they're not too big. Um, so that's going to be another pro. This thing wicks like a champ. And I'm not saying it's because of the knurling on the chimney. I'm saying because of of the uh, GTA style deck and how it's lifted up and you have those ports. If you just dam the top of that up, this thing will, will not dry hit on you. I do love that neural drip tip that's sitting on top there. It's super nice looking, especially on top of this storm breaker. Um, so basically other than the, the little things that I said, which can be, to me, it's not a big deal. A couple things. The only way I would not buy this tank is if you're looking for something that has massive amounts of airflow. A lot of people that buy 30 mils, that's what they're looking for. So if you're looking for mass amounts of airflow, this probably isn't going to be the best tank for you. Also, <clears throat> if you don't run high power, this probably isn't the tank for you either because this thing wants fucking power like you can run this thing so hot i've never ran an rta this hot and enjoyed it ever even with the restrictive hit it has the way that that airflow is it's just so smooth and perfect and the tank is just hungry for power and you're gonna need that six and a half mil bubble glass because it drinks it trust me Another pro is there's three glasses included with it, the bubble and two straights. That's a really nice touch. Um, you get the extra clamps, so if the ones in it start to get all worn out and old, you have two fresh ones. Definitely a pro in my opinion. The <clears throat> O-ring tolerances were great. The AFC turns great, but it's not loose. It holds its spot. Nice protruding 510 pin if you want to run it on a hybrid connection. So, before I say this, I'm going to say this is obviously my opinion. So, I'm not trying to force anything on anybody, but what I'm going to say right now may make some people mad or disagree with me heavily, but out of all RTAs I've ever used, whether it be single coil, dual coil, mesh, out of everything this is my favorite um, the flavor is just spectacular the airflow is smooth smooth as can be and the clouds off it are ridiculous I mean this is probably running at half power right now but the So, my criteria for a good atomizer, cloud production, smoothness of airflow, and flavor, 
smashes all three right out of the park, making this my favorite RTA I have ever used in my vaping life. <clears throat> so do I recommend it? Yes, 100% all day. I don't think this tank got the credit it deserved in the US. I know it was big in the UK, but I feel like it didn't get the credit it deserved in the US. So if you can get your hands on one of these, I would definitely recommend picking one up for sure. Vapor DNA did list them for $29.99, and there was somewhere else that was selling them just in the last few days for like $10, but they're sold out now. So they're not expensive whatsoever. So it's at the price point where if you're iffy about it, it's probably worth picking it up and trying because, listen, if you follow me and you found that you have the same like um, vaping um, styles that I have and, and you agree with what I vape on as good, then I would 100% pick one of these up because you're probably going to fucking love it. The only thing I'm telling you is if you like massive amounts of airflow, you're not going to get it from this tank, and that's about it. So, um, I will see you guys tomorrow with another review. Next week, we have the Stormbreaker review coming and some other stuff. So, uh, this was a week of uh, RTAs, did the Kelpie, now this guy. Next week, we got the Recurve Duel and the Stormbreaker. So... And I'll see you tomorrow with an e-juice review and Sunday night on the Sunday Hoedown Show. So thank you everybody for watching. We'll see you soon. Have a good night.